In today's video, I'm going to break down what the rich are actually doing to protect their assets, save on taxes, and have privacy in the process. Now, everybody's situation is different. Some of you might have more zeros at the end of your net worth. Some of you might be business owners or own real estate. Some of you might be a high income W-2 employee. But these structures I'm going to show you are the most common ways to meet those three objectives. I'm Matt Sorensen. Let's build wealth. Okay, so I got to lay the foundation for this and how this works. And this is called the trifecta. This is what we do on our law firm every day, helping clients across the country. The first thing you need to understand is the way you protect assets and save taxes is different for operational businesses, your main business, your small business, your side hustle, I don't care what it is, you're selling goods and services versus your assets and investments, okay? They're taxed differently and they have different asset protection rules and risks. So we treat them differently, they have different corporate structures. Now I'm gonna diagram this here so you see on the left side, we have operations and on on the right side, we have assets. Now think of this assets or investments, operations and businesses. Now we call this the trifecta. And the reason we call it that is there are three components to it. There's your operations on the left side, your assets on the right side. And at the bottom, there is your trust. Now I'm going to come back to the trust here in a second. This is really for estate planning. You don't run your business through a trust. We're not using the trust for asset protection. There's some privacy to it. I'm going to come back to that, but there's no asset protection or tax plan planning right now for your income using a trust, but we are going to have asset protection up here with the LLCs and we're going to have tax savings over here with corporations. All right, now let's start over on the left side here with operations and businesses. The most common is going to be a small business owner selling goods or services. I don't care if you're a dentist, a real estate agent, a consultant, you have a restaurant, whatever you are, again, you're selling goods or services, you're going to have income coming into your S corporation and then you are going to pay yourself. Now this is you down here. You are the beneficiary and owner of your trust and you file a 1040 tax return. Now, the reason we use an S corporation is what happens when you make money selling goods or services is you pay self-employment tax and you pay income tax. Now the income tax rate goes from zero to 37%. It's a ladder depending on how much money you're making. Self-employment tax is 15.3% and it starts at $1. Okay, <laughs> like you start paying this off of every penny you make. So for example, let's say I made $100,000 and I didn't have any entity. I didn't use an S corporation. I'm selling goods or services. I make a hundred grand. Okay, you pay 15.3% into self-employment tax. That's $15,300. This is going into social security and Medicare. Then you pay income tax. Now I'm paying income tax on hundred thousand dollars, whatever tax bracket I might be into. Let's say that with your other income and this, you're in a 20% tax bracket to keep it easy. That's going to be $20,000 in income tax. Now there's nothing you can do about your tax bracket based on your income by using the right S corporation structure, as opposed to a sole proprietorship, as opposed to a C corp, as opposed to an LLC, you can save on taxes. And here's how let's take that same hundred thousand dollars you make. Okay. Now I've got that coming into my S corporation and I'm paying myself a salary, which you need to do when you have an S corp, you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary and I'm going to pay out profit or dividend to me as the business owner. Now what happens here? Let's say that I paid myself $40,000 in a salary, $60,000 in profit. I'm going to pay 15.3,000 on the 40,000. That's going to cost me about 6k. However, the other 9,000 that I would have had to pay over here, I'm exempt. Profit income coming out of your S corporation to yourself as the business owner is not subject to self-employment tax. You're still going to pay income tax on it. Okay. I didn't get you out of any income tax, but I got out of $9,000 in self-employment tax in that scenario. This is why the most popular business structure for small business owners is an S corporation. Whether you're a small business owner or president of the United States, you should be using an S corporation to save on taxes. I've got a video here showing you just how Joe Biden did it himself. Okay. So the S corp is saving me on on taxes up here. Also, I've got some asset protection. If something goes wrong in my small business, they're forced to sue the S corporation. They can't come down and sue me personally. They can't come over and get into my assets. They're stuck at whatever assets the S corporation has. So that's one of the benefits of using a corporation or an LLC, which we'll talk about here in a second is I do get asset protection. Any risks the business have are stuck at the business. They cannot get down to my personal assets, my home, my retirement accounts, my investments, my savings, my rental properties. Those are all separate from the business risks. Okay. So let's check back up here. I'm using an S corporation for asset protection because I'm getting that for my small business. It's also 
saving me on taxes. Now, do I get privacy in an S corporation? Not really. A lot of people think of privacy for their investment assets, my rental properties, my other investment assets. I don't want people to know about that. But my small business, people know that I work in that business every day. A lot of people are so connected to their business as being the face of it or an officer of it. It's very hard to get privacy in your S corporation or in your day-to-day -day business. So don't think about privacy there. We'll come to privacy here in a second, but I'm getting asset protection and I'm getting tax savings. All right, let's come over to the right side of the trifecta here and let's talk about what what do I do with my rental properties, okay? My investment accounts, my crypto account. What am I doing with these assets? What about my retirement account, my IRA or 401k? How are those protected? When we talk about rental properties, this is the most common place to use an LLC. We set up hundreds of these for clients every month, buying rental, real estate, single family homes, apartment buildings, commercial properties, storage facilities, doesn't matter. We're still gonna use an LLC. The reason we use an LLC for rental real estate is because of asset protection. It's not about taxes, it's about asset protection. What I'm trying to do here is, if something happens on the property, the tenant is forced to sue the LLC. They can't come down to me personally. They can't come over here to my business. If I've got multiple LLCs, they can't get into the other LLCs that own separate properties. So I'm limiting my liability in that rental real estate and that venture by using the limited liability company. That's what LLC means. Now there can be some privacy component to this because I'm not going to list myself as the member or owner of the LLC with the state. Now some of you might be owning like a multifamily property or a property where you're not involved at all. The tenants don't even know who you are. You have a property manager or a third party employee or someone that's engaged in this process. Maybe they're the manager on the LLC even. And so your name's not even on the LLC filing. Or maybe you have a Wyoming LLC that is super private that is the manager of your Indiana LLC that owns a rental property in Indianapolis and you're staying private there because on the LLC filing, you haven't had to disclose ownership. So in many states, there are ways for you to not have to be on the LLC filing. It's different between the 50 states, but you can use an LLC for privacy protection. So I can get asset protection on an LLC and I can get privacy protection on an LLC. Is the LLC gonna save me taxes? No, it's not gonna save me taxes, okay? But I got some asset protection and I got privacy protection by using the LLC. Now, all of your other assets are treated a little differently. Your investment account, your crypto account, you may own that in your personal name. There's not tax benefits to putting those in entities. Is there really asset protection risk on an investment account? Probably not. Sometimes we use a Wyoming LLC for something called charging order protection. I've got a video here you can watch about that. That's maybe 5% of clients. I don't wanna go into it in too much detail here, but if you're thinking about, man, I've got a million, 10 million of net worth, maybe you wanna check out that video on how to protect those assets. But let me say this, this is very common. 401ks and IRAs are protected against lawsuits. You don't need to put them in an LLC or entity. They are automatically protected under law. So I have asset protection already in my retirement accounts directly without having to use an S corporation, LLC, or trust. Now, the last component here is the trust. Now, this is a revocable living trust, okay? And a revocable living trust does not give me asset protection. It does give me some privacy protection and it can save me on estate taxes. Okay. This is estate taxes specifically. I'm going to come to that in a second here. Now, a lot of people use trust for asset protection. We don't believe in that. Maybe you're in a state that has a domestic asset protection trust. There's like a dozen of those. If that's the case, I like the domestic asset protection trust. It's under state law. It works in certain states, but we don't like using irrevocable trusts in foreign countries. They're very complicated. You pay ridiculous taxes. You're having a significant amount of disclosure to the federal government and maybe some asset protection. I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze on the irrevocable trust. It could be, it could be. That's just not our typical structure where we send clients. But for most people, you should be doing a trust for estate planning purposes so that your heirs can inherit your property and know what your wishes are. They don't have to go to probate court to probate a will. They have your trust. It distributes assets to them upon passing and it does it in an efficient way without probate costs. Now there's a way you can save on estate taxes by doing an AB trust. This is for those of you who have a $10 million state or more. 
a married couple. You can double up your estate tax exemption, which is right now around 13 million. You can get a total 26 million that you could pass on to your kids with no estate tax. So sometimes we're using the trust for estate tax purposes. For those of you with $13 million plus estates that are married, again, we can double up on the exemption there. But otherwise there's really not tax savings in a trust. But again, I'm getting estate planning benefits. I'm not having to go to probate court, which means it's private. It means everybody doesn't know all the assets that I have when I pass away. If you have to go to probate, that's a public record. Everyone can see what assets you have and what kids got what. If you have a trust, that is all privately held, privately administered by the trustee. Now, as I said, our lawyers are structuring this every day for clients across the country. They're setting up a trifecta. They're doing a tax and business implementation plan on your business structure, on your investments, on your retirement accounts. Are you self-directing? They're getting into all these questions to help save you taxes, protect assets, and build wealth. And that is the same thing I'm trying to do every day here on our channel. Please go over to my law firm, KQS Lawyers, where we help set up a trifecta for your specific situation. We have a tax and business implementation plan to help you save on tax is protect your assets and grow your retirement accounts. And please, most of all, subscribe to my channel. I'm here every day trying to give you tips on how to grow and build your wealth. I'm Matt Sorensen. We'll see you next time.